Welcome to the Thoth Tarot Pod Class. It's a podcast, but you're going to learn a lot, so it's more of a class. I'm going to be touring the teleology of tarot through the Thoth Tarot deck, specifically through Aleister Crowley's Book of Thoth. This is a deep one. It's probably, in my opinion, one of the most sophisticated things ever written on tarot. So let's dive in. First of all, if you're interested in the Thoth deck, what you need to know is that this is a sexy, spicy deck. It's working from a different paradigm as other tarot decks, and so it really packs a fiery punch. We're going to explore why through the Book of Thoth, but I want to address Aleister Crowley before we get started. Aleister Crowley is different things to different people, and I am not going to sit here and argue for or against this person. I have my own personal views and my uh, you know, personal grievances around his biography and all of that, but I want you to know that regardless of what I think or what you think about Aleister Crowley, he is an integral influence on Western esotericism, undeniable, and uh, especially uh, on tarot. So I will offer you the way that I work with Aleister Crowley in my professional work as a teacher of tarot and as a school owner, uh, and you can take with that what you want. I look at uh, Aleister Crowley as a database of occult knowledge that has helped me uh, connect various mystical and magical systems from my own personal and professional work. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'll make another video about him another time. But in this pod class, we will be focusing on his work, The Book of Thoth, to study the Thoth tarot deck and advance our tarot knowledge. So let's jump in. I'll also link in the description where you can find the PDF of this book if you'd like to follow along. So part one of the Book of Thoth reads part one, the theory of the tarot. Here Crowley is going to ex define tarot and he is going to uh, explore its connection with the Kabbalah, a little bit of its history, and uh, some very interesting updates and remixes of this knowledge that make his deck exceptionally existential. <laughs> it's going to get really deep. It's quite a wormhole. I would say a fun place to start is obviously the beginning, but I want to jump to page four, where he actually defines tarot. And he says, quote, the only theory of ultimate interest about the tarot is that it is an admirable symbolic picture of the universe based on the data of the Holy Kabbalah. Whoa. So this definition is really fun, and I'm just going to add a couple cents. If you're if you have followed my work for any amount of time, you know that I'm a sucker for the deeper mysteries of tarot, especially in its connection to the Kabbalah. When I started studying Kabbalah and tarot together, tarot became not just a tool for divination and personal insight, but transpersonal recognition. It became a tool of mystical philosophy and honestly, spiritual awakening, which I believe is what the tarot ultimately can be if you want it to be that. So if you're listening to this pod class, uh, <laughs> you're probably looking to jump in, the, jump in the deep end. So you're in the right place if that is the case. Um, now, I have to address that not everybody is going to want to connect tarot to Kabbalah and these higher mysteries, and that's totally fine. But it is important to note that Kabbalah does originate with the Jewish people. It is a Jewish mystical tradition with its roots in earlier forms of Jewish mysticism, specifically Merkabah mysticism and uh, Hekelot and other things. How there is a difference between the Jewish Kabbalah and the Hermetic Kabbalah you will often see spelled with a Q. The Jewish Kabbalah is often spelled with a K. The Hermetic Kabbalah is the Western esoteric remix of the Jewish Kabbalah. It is where inf Kabbalistic influences have combined with tarot and astrology and other systems in various orders and organizations for a number of different purposes. Uh, to, to parse out all of these influences would be its own podcast and probably book and library. Uh, so that's not what I'm going to do here, but I just want you to know that there is a difference and the two emphasize different things, but let's continue. Okay. So now let's talk about Gamatria. Gamatria is a beautiful system where words turn into numbers and create relationships with other words. To simplify this very deep esoteric uh, discipline, uh, it kind of goes like this. Every Hebrew letter has a number. And so when you add up all the Hebrew letters of a word, you get a number. Now, every word that shares that enumeration is linked with that word. So I'll share with you an example that uh, Crowley gives us. 
we're going to look at the words unity and love. Okay, so the Hebrew word for unity is achad, is aleph, het, dalet. Aleph is one, het is eight, and dalet is four, reducing to 13. Okay, abba is love. Abba also reduces to 13. So unity and love are connected. So you might say that the nature of unity is love. How beautiful is that? Now he's going to go even further and bring in the word YHVH. YHVH is the Holy Tetragrammaton. It is the name of God. And in the Thoth deck, it's this formula of creation and balance. It's Yahweh, it's Jehovah, it's, it's a big name. Uh, Yahweh here, Jehovah, reduce, YHVH reduces, this is yod heh vav reduces to 26. Now 26 is 13 times 2. Remember that 13 is the number of the words unity and love. So Jehovah is then unity manifested in duality because it's two times 13. This is important. And it's not just a fun example of gematria. It's actually going to be the thesis of the entire Thoth deck. The Thoth deck is a symbolic expression of a mathematical teaching where unity becomes duality. The Thoth deck in its own skin of you know, a culture and the Lima and sex magic and astrology is an expression of non-duality. So let's continue. He is going to say, Curly, that this is the true magical doctrine of Thelema. Thelema is the religion that Alistair Curley started. Uh, that doctrine is zero equals two. The idea here, zero equals two, is a shorthand for zero equals plus one minus one. And it is a universal view where the universe splits itself and uh, disproportions itself to manifest what we experience. So the idea here is if we were to match everything in the universe with its exact opposite, every positive charge with its negative charge, every up with every down, every cold with every hot, every, all of them. If all the opposites came together, then the universe would even itself out in perfect zero. Now, this is not necessarily a novel idea. Uh, we see this in mysticism a lot. In Zen, we see the doctrine of the void, the shunyavada, which is the idea that the ultimate nature of things is emptiness. In Advaita Vedanta, we see the idea of nirguna brahman, which is the ultimate reality without any qualities. In Kabbalah, we are going to be met with the three veils of nothingness, Ein So. In every good mystical tradition, we're going to find this existential nothingness at some point, this lack of quality, this pure emptiness. And, uh, and, ta and the tarot, especially the Thoth deck, is going to symbolize how this emptiness becomes something, how something comes out of nothing, literally how something comes out of nothing, how the magician pulls a rabbit out of its hat, which is why we have card one, the magician, which we'll get to soon. Curly goes on to talk about numbers as these very high truths. And he, and I believe this is influenced by his channeled writing, The Book of the Law. He essentially says that every number is not simply the number that follows the previous number, but has its own nature. When you start thinking about in the different numbers having their own nature, you're starting to think like a magician or potentially a mystic. Especially with tarot, this is going to open up a whole nother level of understanding with the cards. It has been argued by certain mystics, I'm thinking Paul Foster Case especially, that when you reach a certain level of spiritual awareness, the only way to even conceptualize it is through number. I'm sure all of this has its roots in Pythagoreanism and other early Greek philosophy and mysticism, but here we are. Crowley then goes on to discuss uh, a little bit of history. And to sum it up real quick, pretty much, you have early French occultists like Eliphas Levy, which are connecting tarot to the Kabbalah, connecting the major arcana cards to the Hebrew letters. And then you have later occultists in the mid 1800s start to connect it even further. In around 1884, there are three Freemasons that start that begin to develop a new initiatory order called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. They obtained uh, these papers in a book that was a cipher called the Cipher Manuscript that, that allegedly 
describe the creation and skeleton of this magical order that they, they were to put together. So in this order, they connect the tarot to various disciplines in a new way. They update the correlations between tarot and Kabbalah and add a number of other skins and layers, including Tantra, astrology, uh, ritual, and various other fun things. Egyptian iconography, Christian mysticism, it's a fun, it's a fun ride. But I want to bring your attention to page 10 of the Book of Thoth, because here Crowley brings up a lot of points that I really think we can use in contemporary tarot. Under where it says, summary of the questions that here to discussed. Number one, the origin of the tarot is quite irrelevant. Even if it were certain, it must stand or fall as a system on its own merits. So a lot of people fantasize the origin of tarot in the same way as people were fantasizing the origin of the hermetic literature in the Renaissance. We love to fetishize the past and there's nothing wrong with that, right? We love a good origin story. I love a good origin story, right? We all want this to be from Atlantis and maybe it is, but it's not about relying on historical accuracy. It's about efficacy. When we work with the tarot and it's, and it, as a system, we have to ask, is this, is this effective? Is this working for us? Is this valuable? Is this helping us with our spiritual growth and our insight and our, in, you know, all of that fun stuff. And what you will find if you study the history of tarot is the the evidence points to, not to something kind of fantastical. It does not point to this common, exciting origin story of Atlantis or ancient wisdom. It points to a historical train wreck. It points to absolute chaos of multiple traditions running into each other and philosophical systems of varying cultures, especially with Greece, Jewish, Platonic, and, and alchemical and otherwise. And it's, it's very hard to kind of parse out and find the common denominators until they smash together again, you know, hundreds of years later. And that's kind of the pattern. But that's actually, in my opinion, validating to the tarot because the tarot is this constant coming together of various traditions that just can't seem to continue playing with each other. And this is why when you're asking these big existential questions, when you're looking for enlightenment, when you're going down the mystical path and asking these you know, getting into these ontological discussions, you're going to find other misfits at the mystical misfit lunch table. Yes, you will. Throughout history, I am sure that those Kabbalists were talking with those Neoplatonists, and those Neoplatonists were probably talking with Hermeticists at some point, and Gnostics at some point. These things influence each other, or at least they were playing with each other's writings and, and remixing and exploring and reinventing and, you know, Think about it now. Like, if you want to study tarot, what are you going to do? You're going to you go to Barnes and Noble. You go to New Age section. You're going to see a bunch of books from different traditions and different ideas. But there, they all there. But there, they all are because that's where everyone's asking about tarot. Number two, Crowley says it is beyond doubt a deliberate attempt to represent in pictorial form the doctrines of the Kabbalah. Okay, now this is again debatable historically, but this is where you have to ask: Is it effective in studying the tarot in relationship with the Kabbalah? For me it transforms the whole damn thing. For you, it may not. That's up to you. Uh, number three, the evidence for this is very much like the evidence brought forward by a person doing a crossword puzzle. So he's going to say that when you fill in the blanks of Tarot and Kabbalah, they fit perfectly. And the truth is, they do. Numerically and in many other ways, it's like they were made for each other. But again, was this, were they historically designed together? Probably not which makes it even more magical, in my opinion. Number four, he says, these attributions are in one sense a conventional symbolic map. Such could be invented by some person or persons of great artistic imagination and ingenuity combined with almost unthinkable great scholarship and philosophical clarity. And number five, such persons, however eminent we may suppose them to have been, are not quite capable of making a system so abstruse in its entirety without the assistance of superiors whose mental processes were or are pertaining to a higher dimension. Obviously, he's talking about the Jedi. I'm just kidding. I don't know. What he, it could be the Ascended Masters or whatever Paul Foster case was getting up to. But I do believe that somewhere, in some place, even if it's in our own subconscious, there is an intelligence that is working out these systems. In the same way as there's a, an intelligence guiding you to listen to my words and make sense of them in your brain, there is an, an intelligence, whether we call it the collective unconscious or the objective psychoid or our ancestors or the higher self or whatever, that is guiding the formation of these mystical systems and 
you know, especially tarot. Remember before when I said that we don't need that like fantastical solid history for the, the, the mystical tradition of tarot to be so mystical? Well, Crowley is going to re reiterate that here. He says, it is quite possible to argue that the game of chess is merely one of a number of games which has developed while other games died out because of some accident. One can argue that it is merely by chance that modern chess was latent in the original game. Okay, so in the same way as chess, as someone didn't just sit down and say, hey, I'm going to invent the game of chess. It came out of multiple, multiple games coming together. Tarot was the same way. We don't need some like old obscure magi coming together and say, we are going to invent this tarot to encode the mysteries, the, the, the perennial wisdom of ages so that the future, you know, occultists like here we are now can maybe have some chance of decoding the cipher. No, I mean, maybe, but more interestingly, the design of tarot existed inherently in the earlier games. We know now that uh, playing cards actually predated tarot, but even in playing cards, the very system of number and suit have had some pattern that is valuable, that grew into, that influenced tarot and continue to this day. Maybe those four elements that Empedocles was talking on about centuries and centuries before uh, were somehow embedded in the human psyche to, to develop the tarot, uh, the playing cards. In the next pod class episode, we will be exploring tarot, Kabbalah, the Naples arrangement, and more. Now, I'm going to recommend that you download my free guides to help integrate this knowledge. I have a Thoth Tarot instant reading guide, which you can download totally for free. I also have some other guides that go into more depth on the symbolism of the Thoth Tarot. You can get that in the link in the description or Tarot Mystic mysticismacademy.com slash e slash dash books. Uh, but if you really want to deep dive into this work, this is not something you can learn over a YouTube video or reading a book. You really need a teacher and you need time and discipline. If that's you, you're going to want to check out my master curriculum where I would mentor you in over a year in a bunch of different courses on this knowledge and you can use it to tra totally transform your world. All right. I'll see you in the next wormhole. Much love.